but I think most of the archers are shooting uh, also 70 meters uh, when uh, it's winter time. So I think most of them right now they are focused on outdoor because it's an Olympic year and uh, this indoor season is uh, more or less to keep competing and uh, going on with the uh, competition and maybe learn something new and uh, get confidence. All right, we move on to the men's team gold medal match now. This will be France facing Germany. Take a look at the French team. There's Olivier Tavernier, 39 years of age, teamed up with Laurent Moulot and Thomas Antoine. France beating Belarus 5-1 and the Russian Federation 5-4 to get to this gold medal match. They defeated the Russian Federation, which is impressive in its own right. And that was in a shoot-off. The shoot-off was scored at 29-all, but the arrows by the French team better than the team, the arrows by the French, uh, Russian Federation, I should say. Today they will face Team Germany in the gold medal match. Germany defeating Georgia 5-1, then knocking off Ukraine 5-3. Carlos Schmitz on your left, waving to the crowd. Florian Ploto on your right, and Florian Kalun in the center of that picture. The threesome. The two impressive teams right here getting set to go at it for the gold medal. World Championship at stake right now here in Turkey. Anatolia. Carlo Schmitz will lead it off for the German squad. Carlo, 19 years of age, ranked 184th in the world. Carlos Sparting is a Seattle Seahawk cap. For those of you who follow American football, Anna's a big fan. <laughs> Where you come from, football is actually played with your feet, right? Yeah, yes, exactly. Yes. Uh -huh. And I have no idea uh, what the Americans are exactly. doing. Yes, that's all right. Most Americans are not sure what the Americans are doing either. Good <laughs> one. Lorian Kalund won a World Cup gold medal on the beach, Konialti Beach in Antalya, Turkey, two years ago. Follows up the 10 by Floto. So a nine and two tens. Now the French squad. Just a tad low. You can see that the uh, French team is not uh, with uh, archers who are usually on uh, competitions. They uh, are probably preparing for outdoor season. Some fresh faces and some new names. And a nine. Shooting for France. So a total of 28 points on those first three shots for the French squad. Moulot, Tavernier, and Antoine. Schmitz improving on his first effort. Now here's Floto. Big, strong, impressive athlete. Germany's got something going here. And now Kalund. If he gets a 10, they get two points. Yes, they get a set. That's it. No way for France to catch up. They'll take the first two set points. Here's practice now. Right, so Germany sets the bar high. Hey. 
Just out of the 10 range from Olivier. And the French still trying to find the range. Olivier Tavernier. With a nine on his shot. Inside the line. For Flora Moulot, 23 years of age. Looking for his first major medal. Thomas Antoine won a team gold medal in Nîmes two years ago. It's going to be France shooting first. Those shots. Practice shots, essentially, for France. It's impressive that the uh, French team didn't send the uh, top archers, and they are still shooting for gold. Apparently, Mr. Moulot, and Tavernier, and Antoine believe that they are top archers. <laughs> they believe in themselves. Actually, they are proving that they are. In many cases, in many sports, all anyone needs is a chance, an opportunity exactly. to show what you can do. I think uh, in in country like France, it's not so easy to get it, to get a chance to, to improve yourself. Let me ask you about Slovenia a little bit. Winter time, a little bit difficult to train in the winter season? Yeah, in Slovenia, we have for the first time an opportunity to shoot uh, 70 meters in the winter because we are uh, shooting from container from inside to outside. To outside, yes. So we have uh, warm. We have to. What is the name of warmer? Oh, a heater? A heater, yes. Mm -hmm. We have a heater inside and it makes a little bit easier. But you have to go outside where it's cold yes, to go get yes, the arrows. Where it's maybe minus five <laughs> degrees. You have to be devoted to the sport, don't you? Yes. Yes. I bet you walk a little bit faster when it's cold. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think uh, Slovenians, we are really uh, with heart in this sport because we, we, are, uh, we are ready to do everything to, to succeed. Mm -hmm. Which is what it takes. Yes. Tavernier. Allez, Flo, du courage. Tattoos the ten ring. Allez, tout de suite au visage. Yes. Just outside. Allez, Thomas. Yes, c'est bien, les gars. Antoine, 21 years of age, averaging over nine points per arrow, 9.2 to be exact. Carlo, ooh, in the red ring. Florian Floto. Floats one up there for 10 more points. And now Kalund. Ranked 16th in the world. And shows it. Need to get Florian a cap. His other two teammates are wearing their caps. We've got to get Kalun to cap. Maybe, maybe yes. they are uh, rappers. Maybe. And he just doesn't listen to rap, you know? <laughs> <laughs> no, he, looking at Florian, he doesn't look like he'd be a rapper. No. No. <laughs> And 
Bush. I feel like it was I hate them. Yes. So Antoine with the 10. But Germany can still pick up two set points for these three shots. But if Schmitz, Kalund, and Flodo come through. 10. They'll be in a great position. Carlo Schmitz. They still have a chance to get uh, set. And go up four to nothing in the match. Nice. Take substance over style any day of the week. They can wear their hats, they can not wear their hats, but they can't shoot. <laughs> With the hats or without the hats? Florian Kalun puts that set away. And right now, Germany is poised one set away from taking the gold medal. All they need to do is wrap up this next set. And that gold is theirs. Germany, as we said at the start of this match, got here with a 5-1 win over Georgia, a 5-3 win over Ukraine. And now in position to blank Team France. The French down 4 nothing after the opening two sets. And once again, this is a French team that defeated the Russian Federation. We just got done watching the Russian Federation put on an impressive display. And this French team beat them. But a few shots here and a few shots there that just veered off center. It put them in a position where they're going to have to fight hard to come back. But it's one shot at a time when you get in a spot like this, isn't it, Anna? I mean, yeah. all you can do is focus on each shot, hope that each one adds up to what you need to get back and win a set. Dr. Erdner. <laughs> Amongst the dignitaries here in Ankara, Turkey. The 30-year-old Olivier Tavernier. It was a long shot, but really good one. When someone holds that long, what does that tell you? Why are they holding that long? Because it's a long way to get through the clicker. Okay. <laughs> Yes. So three straight tens by Tavernier, Boulot, and Antoine. The French not going down without a fight. And uh, they put some pressure on German team. I think Carlo likes archery. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. What was my first clue? Florian Flotto didn't miss a 10 ring yet. He's shooting really strong. It was Schmitz who shot the 9. Ten, ten, and, a nine. and also Florian. <laughs> so the two Florians have been almost yeah, flawless. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yes. 
Tavernier. Picks up 10 more points, but took some time there. Now, they've got two more shots to get off, and there's 22 seconds on the clock. You have to wonder if Moulot is aware of this, eating up a lot of time. Good shot, but now Antoine, with less than 10 seconds to go, draws it back. I'm sure his coach is counting him down, and he got it. They got also uh, two set points. Time winding down. Antoine was able to nail a 10. They get six straight tens for France in this third set. And pulls the French squad back within two points. Germany will be leading. They'll lose this set. They'll drop a set. But now France will only be trailing by the score of four to two after this shot by Florian Kalun. So this set, French team show us how how they beat uh, Russian team. Some spirit, some fight in the French team. Six straight tens. Olivier yeah. Tavernier got it started with a 10. I think that shows how important it is to have a good leadoff person who can get that started and hopefully get others to shoot, follow the lead. To build a little bit of momentum. Especially when you are losing for, oh, it's, uh, it's really important to, to keep fighting. And you need something positive to happen, don't you? Yeah. And the leader with the uh, tens. Mm -hmm. When you're shooting team, where do you like to shoot? Lead off? For Anchor? Me, it, uh, it doesn't really matter. I, I don't shoot uh, team run uh, a lot of times, so I, I enjoy every time. And every time. I am happy to be there. Yeah. doesn't matter which place I should. So there's your score. Germany leading at 4-2 over France in the recurve men's team gold medal match here at the Indoor World Championships in Turkey. Karl Arki along with Anna Umer from Slovenia. And the French fans open it up here in the Congressium. Kind of a cold, wet day outside, but inside, nice and dry and warm and great action. Tavernier was able to get France off to a good flying start in that third set. Let's see if he can do it again here. Holding and holding and holding, and did he catch that line? I think it's a 10. They put the star by at the asterisk. Anna Umer thinks it's a 10, I think it's a 10. What matters is what the judges think. That could be three straight tens right there. Let's see how Germany responds. Carlos Schmitz. Ten. They respond with a ten. Okay, now we go back. Carlos Hobby driving fast cars fast. And shooting tens. Now Floto. Ten. 
finds the sweet spot. Kaloon low. It is entirely possible that France is up by one at this point. We don't know for sure. And of course, the French archers can assume nothing, so. It would behoove them to continue shooting nine. tens. Instead, it's a nine for Tavernier. Hi, Flo. Solide au visage, tout de suite. Laurent Moulot. Au bout. Nine. Delivers low. Now they really need a 10. And even with a 10. Well, they get it. But it's tough right now. Yes, it is. Germany can close out the match and claim the gold medal. So here's the man who likes driving fast cars fast. See if he likes shooting tens. Ooh, he sh shoots one way outside. Not so fast, my friends. <laughs> it was an eight. France may have new life. Maybe we are going to see a shoot-off. Yeah, definitely. That is how quickly a 4 nothing lead can evaporate and disappear. Germany was cruising. You can't shoot it much better than that. Florian Kaloon. And the Germans keeping their emotions in check and to themselves, but have to be disappointed that they relinquished a 4 0 lead and have to go to a shoot off now where about anything can happen. Now, if the score is tight, the, the closest arrows are the winner. So Germany took the first two sets, went up 4 0. France has come back, captured the next two sets, tied it up at 4 all, and we head to a shoot off. And they will alternate back and forth from one team to the other. And each archer will get to shoot one arrow. And now the German team will shoot first. Lodo, Cologne, and Schmitz forced to go to a shoot off against Moulot, Tavernier, and Antoine. It's a high drama here at the Indoor World Championships. The first three team matches, not all that close. Georgia winning the women's bronze medal, 6-2. to two. Japan winning the women's gold medal, 6 nothing. Russia winning the men's team bronze medal, 5-1. But here in the men's gold medal match, France and Germany going at it, back and forth. One team winning the first two sets, the other team winning the next two sets. So shoot off it is. Fresh target faces. Germany on target number two. Trying to pull this match out of the fire. Look like they were going to be able to put it on cruise control and not have to drive fast. Not the case. Carlo Schmitz comes through. So good. Yes! Tavernier. 
Took about 12 seconds to draw that back and shoot, release. Clock is ticking. Calm, cool, collected. Loro. Cash is in. And Flotos 10 is really a good one. The closest one from now. So Germany is going to pull it out of the fire. And that's yeah. So Germany comes back and in a shoot off.